Elmaster EX. This award-winning system features the first single-engine joystick with digital electric steering and new autopilot capability. See Hellmaster EX in action at a Yamaha Outboard dealer or visit YamahaOutboards.com. Tune into this week's weekly video fishing forecast for a look at the last digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We also have reports and events that we cover from around the island and another open boat episode for you guys. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today's date is November 14th. It is the last digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine that is out now before the big December holiday gift guide. But first, let's run through what's in the digital edition. We have a surf column for you. It's called The Last One. That's by Dave Anderson. It's about the season winding down and catching that last bite, finding a good bite before the season does end. Then I wrote an intro column myself. It is called The Final Hurrah. It's about making the best of the end portion of your season and making it a memorable one. Our freshwater column is all about prepping for winter ice. And our product spotlight this week is on the Garmin Force Kraken electric trolling motor. Now, until December 31st, Tsunami is giving away a Salt X waterproof backpack when you purchase a new Salt X2 reel. With its 19 seals and machined aluminum frame, the rugged Salt X2 can conquer any fishing condition you may face. Check out the QR code for all the details. We have an open boat episode for you this week by Jenny Ackerman. She talks about the camaraderie about, from all surf casters, why we do this. She checks in from the beach. Jenny, what do you got for us? Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. And today on this week's Open Boat, I wanna take a minute to go over a story that really hit with me this weekend. Um, this is, to sum it up, this is what the fishing community is all about, especially with surf casters. That's such a tight knit community. And the big thing for me, is I see it as a fishing community and not a fishing competition. So this story of people coming together and helping others get on fish really, really, really stands out. And I'd love to see and hear about more of these stories as the fall run continues. So let's get into it. This happened on Sunday in Ocean County. I was actually there, but I was late to the party, so I didn't see it happen, but I heard from a lot of the local legends were there, a lot of surf casters were there. There was basically just one small pod of bunker, not really a whole lot going on because the past couple of days, they really gorged on adult bunker, like blitz condition fishing, the first time we've seen that the fall run season this year. But going back to the story, a lot of the guys were just sitting around watching this school of adult bunker literally in the wash and they're throwing metal libs at it. There's nothing really hanging out in it. And Shelly Karras is there. I've done interviews with him. He's a local legend surf caster. He's been fishing for a very, very, very long time. And he knew what to throw to get a fish out of this small pod. So he goes to his truck and he gets a legal snag rig, which you'll see it has an egg sinker and it has a circle hook. And he snags one of these bunkers and pitches it out and he gets on a fish. So after that, he does it again and he sees, like I said, there's a whole group of people there. Little Miss Stella here, who we have a video of, she's be starting to cast, she's getting better at casting. She can almost cast better than I can cast with a metal lip working it in this pod. So Shelly passes the rod off to her and she gets a fish on this legal snag rig. So that's absolutely phenomenal. That's green flag number one with the fishing community there, helping little kids get on fish. But where the story really comes together, a little ways down the beach, there's a gentleman sitting there, mind you, in a very dapper Yankees jacket. Love to see it, go Yanks. Sitting there, just working a rod while he's sitting, and Shelly, um, I talked to him, he says that he's, he's walking with a cane, he's really struggling to walk on the beach in a cane, and he's casting from his chair, and he actually had a striper follow in his pencil popper 
but they wanted to help this guy out. Clearly they saw that he was, you know, struggling with, you know, just, just physical setbacks. So everyone came together and they wanted to help him out. So Shelly set up the same thing, the legal snag rig with a live bunker. And a lot of guys were there that helped this guy just to stand and he got onto a fish and you can see in the picture here, we have Andrew Carey, another awesome surf caster, helping him fight this fish. And they bring it in, and they have this beautiful picture of just a very nice, healthy, chunky striped bass hooked right in the corner of its mouth. That's what the legal snag rigs are all about. And just looking at these pictures, you see the smile on this guy's face. This. You could tell it just made his whole day. Great job, man. When I heard the story on Sunday, and like I'm getting a little emotional about it now, it did bring a tear to my eye. And the guys that were there, like hanging out all at their trucks, grown men brought to tears by this. Because that's, you know, that's just something that everyone should be doing. If you see someone out there that's struggling or they're just not as capable as you are with fishing, help them out. Like, I always look for, especially with blitz fishing, there's a lot more people out there. If I see a kid that like, can't cast into where the fish are or anything, I'll literally cast my rod and hand it off to them. And having them hook up and seeing the smile on their face is like the best thing ever. Literally, there's times, and this is, I heard this from everyone who was there on Sunday, where they would rather have that one fish that they see like that guy catch, then catch a thousand fish to themselves. Because where if you're catching, maybe like you have a day where you caught 20 fish, okay, that's a good day. That one fish that that guy caught could be the fish of a lifetime. That created a core memory when not even just him, but everyone who was there to experience it. And that's a lot of good karma. And that's something I wanna see continuing on with the fall run season or just fishing in general. Be the change that you want to see. That's my favorite quote. Help others, help them get on fish, help them with lures or anything that they need set up. If you see someone and you want to help them, like just please do it. Don't just stand there and just flex that you're catching fish. Help others around you. That's the biggest thing with being part of the surf caster fishing community. You know, you could, <laughs> You can act all like tough and hard and stuff, but there's a difference between the people that just catch fish for a living and the difference between people who help people catch fish for a living. That's a big thing that I'm all about. And I really hope that as the fall run continues, more of these stories start to come to light. And if you want to share them with me, you can email me at jackerman at thefisherman.com. Share with me these stories because I want to hear more because a lot of this should be happening more. More positivity out there on the surf, more helping others, and more group encouragement. Come together as a surf caster fishing community and help others get on fish. That's the big thing. Be the change you wanna see. I love to see it, and we should be seeing more of it. More positivity out there in the fishing community. So that's that. Um, next week, we're going to go back into the Surf Casters Challenge, but if you want to get a head start, I know a lot of you guys have adult bunker out there. You're going to want to be throwing one of these. So that's your hint if you want to get a head start and go out there and be mindful of the people around you. If you see someone struggling or trying their hardest to get on fish, help them out. It takes two seconds to help someone out and if they get onto a fish it's the most rewarding experience not only for just your life but for their life too so help others and be the change you want to see and i'll see you guys out there on the surf because it's getting really good so look for the pink beanie all right let's move on over to our upcoming events starting off on november 23rd steigercraft boats has a big open house they're located at 99 bellport avenue in bellport all models will be on display and tours will be given of their factory and operations, outboard engine, along with Sea Keeper representatives will be present and there may be some seminars going on as well. For more information, call 631-286-2136. Then on November 30th is the Lindenhurst Fall Fishing Flea Market. 
on December 5th is the ASMFC International Informational Webinar on Stripe Bass Technical Reporting. And December 9th through 12th is the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council meeting. For details on all these events, visit thefisherman.com slash events. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. All right, let's head over to the map and I'll let you know what I've been hearing this past week. Starting off, we have Emmett Murth Murphy. He decided to check in and said, at a central South Shore beach, stripers were blitzing on peanut bunker within casting distance from around the beach around noon. Bass and birds were everywhere. Bunker being pushed up on the shore. I caught four during the blitz, 28, 31, 32, and 38 inches all on a dark matter silver pencil. The fish were hitting the popper within seconds of it hitting the water. Some very enjoyable fishing. Darwin Lopez checks in. He shows off this 43-pound cow striper caught from the surf, the central south shore, that is. Gary Hung, he showed us a limit of tog from the shore up in the sound, the central sound, using Joe bags, jigs, and green crabs. Then Lauren, she so, shows off her first striped bass she ever caught on a rubber shad just west of Je Deb's Inlet in Far Rockway in about 25 feet of water. Magnolia Bait and Tackle checked in, and they told me Thomas caught this nice 29-inch striped bass off the beach in the Long Beach area. Then this striped bass was caught a live lining bunker out of Jones Inlet by Janine Lichter, and then Matt Lichter followed up with another nice fish caught. They were caught on the Dixie Outlaw. Leah, Erica, and Rosie, they show off a striped bass caught by Erica in 50 feet of water jigging out of Jones Inlet. The fish was caught on a red tube above a diamond jig. We also have some reports from the east end of the island for you guys. Striper fishing held up another week at the point. Fishermen ranging for about 25 to 35 inches on both the north and the south side. Jigs and trolling have all been working. Also on the bottom ground, it's talking sea bass is leading the way out there right now. All the usual spots of block fishers and the points are producing plenty of fish. And if you put your time in, there's enough keepers to go around. Also, a few cod and scup are in the mix as well. And the false albacore showed up in Montauk finally. There's some big ones to 15 pounds in the mix along the south shore. On the striper front, the fish are moving, but there's still a ton of them around. They're on bunker pods and sand eel pods in the ocean from anywhere from Shinnecock all the way to Jones Inlet. Uh, did hear that the bite at the Mauritius Reef and the jetty was still good for blackfish. There's also some blackfish in the bay by the Robert Moses Bridge still and by the rocks at Demo. A lot of undersized fish, but they're still fun to catch and some keepers that are around. On the west end of the island, bass are super active. They're responding well to diamond jigs, live line bunkers, shads, trolled mojos. A lot of fish west of Jones. There's new bodies showing up from the east. On top of that, black fishing at the local bridges is holding steady but the number of keepers is dropping off a little bit. On the sound though, the black fishing continues to be stellar. In 40 to 50 feet of water, it's really good right now. There's a lot of black fish, some to 11 pounds. However, a lot of them are from the short size to six pounds. Uh, all the party and charter boats are doing very well with them and green, green crabs remain the bait of choice. Surprisingly, there are still some porgies around. There's some mixed sea bass sizes coming up on the blackfish grounds in that 40 to 50 foot range as well. If you do have a notable catch, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com. I will try and get into the weekly video fishing forecast or an upcoming issue of the magazine. Our meteorologist, Rich Von Owen, his weather and fishing report is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. We'll check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So on this Wednesday, beautiful afternoon, it turned out the wind was cranking this morning, but came out with my buddy Bill out of Island Park, and we came out of East Rockaway Inlet, and uh, yet again, had some bass. We got autumn for the uh, you know mid to late morning little blitz there with some of the birds working on the sand eels. You can see the actual fish uh, coming through, bursting through the sand eels. Kind of cool there. And we had some schoolies, unders, you know, a 24 to 26 inch fish. 
And then we found a little bit of bunker up and down the beach and uh, my buddy Bill had an over, nice, uh, you know, 39, 40 inch fish. And then came back to the east and we had some bunker here with some of the fleet. And, uh, you know, we had a couple nice fish here, including one slot, so pretty good. I heard last Saturday was epic with the uh, blitz up and down the beach between Jones and East Rockaway. And there's still some fish to be had, slowed down a little bit this week, but you know, hasn't ended yet. There's still some life, still some fish to be caught. So weather-wise, as we go throughout the weekend, let's take a look here, check things out on the maps. And uh, the maps look uh, okay. Uh, Friday, Saturday, it's going to be a little gusty from the north-northwest, you know, maybe a little westerly there. But uh, those will be the days when you have that, like, three- to four-foot chop. But uh, the pick of the weekend is going to be Sunday. Looks really good. Northwest, uh, fairly light, 5 to 15. If all holds well, that'll be your pick to come out and do some good fishing in the ocean. You know, still some good blackfish in the bay in the ocean as well. And overall, the weather's been uh, pretty much manageable, so pretty good. Temperature is a little chilly for the weekend, some 50s to near 60, but that's where we should be for November. And again, the deal looks good. We'll give it uh, you know, a little caution for Friday and Saturday with a little gusty breeze, but I think all's a go. Green light for Sunday, that's going to be the pick of the weekend. So we're looking very good here. Nice to be out. Uh, you know, the wind does settle down now and then to get a nice calm ocean out here. And with the bait and the fish out here, it uh, turns out to be nice uh, when you get those windows. So pretty good. All right, have a great weekend. Enjoy. Catch them up. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Uh, report this week out of Sag Harbor, guys. Despite it being relatively late in the season, we're getting close to November, guys. The fall run is still going strong. Um, I went out myself and, and had albies, bluefish, there's stripers. Uh, this is all out east everywhere from Shinnecock to Montauk. Uh, so that's super exciting and hopefully it just gets better and better. Thanks, Will and Matt. So reported this week also out of Sag Harbor, guys. Um, as Will said, striped bass, bluefish, that's all been really great, even false albies. The cod bites still remain strong, um, both artificials and baits still, clams or diamond jigs. Um, and the same goes with black sea bass too, guys, especially now this time of year. There's some really good big old jumbos in there. Um, and, you know, given the regs this year, it was a little bit tougher, um, especially earlier in the season. Usually the smaller fish are, are more prevalent. But um, this time of year, we've been catching some, some good slammers, even up to 18, 19 inches. Um, so really just awesome stuff and one of our favorite eating fish. So anyway, uh, we'll catch you next week and back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Still have some pretty good striper fishing off the beach and by boat uh, going out in between Shinnecock and Mariches. Uh, the fish kind of thinned out. They're a lot smaller. Obviously, there's, as most people know, an incredible striper bite going on on the uh, Jersey beaches, which, you know, most likely is a lot of those fish that we had here in early October um, when the sand eels showed up. And, you know, on these calm days, it's kind of tough to get a bite, even though sunrise, sunset is kind of like your best shot. If you are able to get out during the day, they can pop up anytime. There is some bunker around, which it really didn't seem to be. We got into uh, seeing a couple of bunker pods west of Mariches over the weekend, pulled a couple of fish uh, from there, the one over of the day. The rest of the fish were um, either shorts or just about slot size that, um, you know, were just chasing birds and throwing bucktails, paddle tails, and, and diamond jigs. So we still have fish around, could see maybe another body of fish. Have heard of uh, just as I did the the last report that I gave a um, couple of random bigger fish at night, but it's a lot of time fishing to get that uh, that one fish if you are able to get one. So uh, it's not over yet, but get out there and fish because it could be over soon. Blackfish remains the same. A couple of fish in the uh, in the inlet that you can get, you know, shore base near any of the the bridge pylons. Uh, have to get through some shorts. To get a keeper, most of the bigger fish seem to be congregating off some of the uh, the wrecks and spots off of Montauk and off Block Island. Uh, tuna fishing, haven't really heard a whole lot, a couple of random catches over the weekend, but nothing that was really like lights out. Um, you know, wreck fishing when people are going for blackfish, also uh, get in some cod and some really super size. Like, you know, the Hampton Lady had a couple of really good wreck trips last week and uh, last weekend. So that's uh, something to check out. So. Get out there and fish so you don't regret it over the winter. All right, thanks guys. Talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, we're back in action in the reports. Completely lost track of last week. Apologize for not having a report. Just 
spending so much time fishing and preparing for baby Maeve that I uh, lost track of time, but it's been so much fun. We've had this total shift this week. Um, last week, as you know, the fishing was just like absolutely out of control. Bass, um, you heard about it from my buddy Gage over there. It was bass everywhere. Uh, the harbor, the outside, the black fishing is absolutely dynamite. But I've seen like a twist. What's going on this week now with the colder temps, you're noticing the water is very, very clear. And that is a clear indication for us that the uh, plankton has dropped down quite a bit. And these bunker, that's what they eat, they're plankton eaters. So in the back of the harbors, when it becomes really gin clear, and we don't have uh, fish pressuring them into the back of the harbors along with north winds, they're gonna migrate back out. So we're looking at peanut bunker for the most part are back in those areas on the outside and uh, the fish are waiting for them we're coming into a uh, new moon phase is going to be coming up again you know every two weeks we have a new moon phase and there's always a shift in the fish um, I'm seeing a lot a lot of blackfish what I'm wondering is some of our really fun shore spots that we've been having a dynamite blast you can jump out of the shop for a couple hours go black fishing have a great time and then get back to work it's a really easy thing to do and it's the same thing with the bass but uh, this week I'm, I'm wondering if we're gonna see a shift with the dropping temperatures of these blackfish are gonna move out of the shallow areas and migrate into deeper waters or is it gonna complete opposite are we gonna have like larger fish really put on the bite just like we saw uh, before the uh, previous week with these bass. When everything starts putting on the chew heavy, you know something's gonna happen. The fish know, and they're usually going to change up or stage. So that's what we're looking for. Um, for the most part, a lot of the boats are pulled out of the water. We've got those folks that trail their own on the boat action. And of course you have party boats in our uh, very talented uh, charter boat captains up here. So if you need any advice, give the call, uh, the shop a call. We're working nonstop here on custom rods. There's so many of these gold ODMs coming in and uh, making them work really beautiful. On top of that, remember, we're like the uh, go-to knife sharpening shop up here on the North Shore. So everybody's dropping off knives. So we're doing a lot of sharpening for the holidays coming up. So uh, drop them off. Make sure you got your knife sharp. Enjoy that carving of that holiday roast, right? Um, or if you're a vegetarian, uh, cut your vegetables really nice and neatly. Hey, listen, it's wonderful to be back here with you again this week. And as always, I bid you peace and tight lines. With the fly and fresh water report, we do have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, it's a sad day. I had to put away my kayak, take it off the car, my canoe, put away the boat, winterize the boat, put away the trailer. It's a sad day in November. I really don't look forward to that. That doesn't mean I'm going to quit fishing, by the way. You know, I'm still going to fish. I'll just do it from shore or wade the streams. And uh, this week, I actually guided two new people, never even touched the rod, let alone a fly rod, uh, Jeff and his son, Peter. And it was gangbusters. There's a lot of fish in the Connect Quad. Of course, uh, we were, uh, Jeff, he wouldn't give up. This, I, I like to change the flies up. Uh, after I catch a few, I like to put a new fly, but he didn't want to give it up. And he was using a fly called the Thin Mint. Uh, it's his type of wood bugger, and he must have hooked, hooked in the high 20s, landed about 15, I don't know, maybe even more. Uh, his son, um, Peter, he, we, did a, he, we did a lot of different things. We did dry flies, he had a few fish on that. We did, of course, wood buggers, we had a couple fish on that. And then we tried wet flies, and we had a lot of fish on the wet flies. And I like swinging the small wets, uh, like the... The hare's ear, uh, winged hare's ear. It's a great little fly. Now, as far as the soil water goes, I'm hearing a lot of good things. A lot of it is, has to do, we have a lot of wind, so a lot of guys are going up there with surf rods and using tins and teasers, and they're catching a lot of, uh, of stripers. I haven't heard any bluefish, so I'm going to assume they're moved on. Uh, going offshore, uh, this guy Chuck. He, he actually went out 
or I'm sorry, Charles, <laughs> Charles, he went out with uh, Frank from Firefly uh, uh, Charters, and they, they had a great day with the fly rod on these big stripers. A lot of whales out there. <laughs> he had to keep his eye open for them, but it was a lot of good things. Uh, Mike Sad uh, Mark Sadati, he actually posted that he got a late-run Albi this week. Uh, this Albi season wasn't that good, but who knows what's going to be next week. So if you, wanted, uh, if you want some uh, a trip guiding, reach out to the shop, 516-415-7748. I guide, I have guides, my son guides, and we can help you out, and you can have a good time. Till next week, tight lines, everybody. From Huntington, we have Captain Gage. Thanks, Matt. What's up, everybody? Captain Gage here reporting to you from Huntington Harbor, where I fish seven days a week for SandCityCharter.com. Check out the website, guys. And Episode 7 of Bay Rats and Buoys, the podcast, will follow this fishing report in all the Facebook groups, so tune into that. Check it out. We're going to be giving away some free merchandise to all our subscribers. We're going to be getting that out to the tackle shops this week as well. So if you want a Bay Rats and Buoys sticker, let us know. We'll be happy to get it to you. You can reach out to us at SandCityCharter.com. The fishing in my area is still real good here on the North Shore. The squid fishing in the harbor is starting to pick up. The water temp right now is 58 degrees. It was 60 just a few days ago. And we're going to get those cooler nights at 34 degrees. So the water temp is really going to start to drop right now. And the bass fishing, the birds are still working. The bass is still here. In fact, Greg just got in. Uh, just passed me a minute ago in the harbor here, and he said he was still getting them in the back where me and him had been getting them three weeks for the past three weeks. It's been lights out. So the bass are still here. They're not of any big giant size. You're getting 28s, 29s, 30s will be the bigger fish that you're catching right now. Um, but the black fishing is still good. Kudos to Charles. He got a nice nine-pound tog over here in the local waters. Didn't have to go across to Connecticut to work the wrecks and the reefs. So he stayed local and got one right here in Northport, which is great to see. So the fishing is still great right now if you guys want to get out there and catch some fish. If not, tune into Episode 7 of Bay Rats and Buoys, the podcast. Wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Back to you, Matt. From the Western Sound, we have Nuno da Costa at Tyler Tackle up in Rye. Hey guys, Nuno here from Tyler. Thanks for having us. A little different report this week as we are away, but the reports don't stop. You know, the striped bass fishing continues. It's hot and cold, different batches of fish. They're actually moving on out. So they're coming through the sound. There's been some fish in the East River. There's a good batch of fish that were off of Coney Island. You go one day, then gone the next day. So there's still some fish around. Live eels have been key for the fish when they're sporadic and not on top. As far as bluefish, I think it's over. I don't think we're ever gonna get them. Bluefin tuna is still around on the South Shore beaches and off of uh, Jersey. As far as the canyon, the weather's been tough. So a lot of boats haven't been out. So we don't know what's happening with that. But once guys get out there, we could tell if the season's still on. I know some of the party boats down in Jersey have added trips and the South Shore boats have added trips. Black fishing still remains super hot. As far as this time of year for the third week of November, it's actually very, very good. We've had a great season in the sound. We're still carrying bait. We're still open every day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come check us out. Rob Greco of the Long Island Outdoorsman in Rockville Center checks in. Hello, fishermen readers. This is Robert from Long Island Outdoorsman giving you this week's fishing report. Uh, coming out of Debs and Jones Inlet, uh, specifically more towards Debs, like the Long Beach area, Lido. Uh, it's been completely insane. I mean, anybody who's been on Facebook the last couple days has seen the reports. Whales, birds diving, stripers on the beach, stripers off the boat. I mean, I believe it was Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday where uh, it was just complete, absolute mayhem. I had reports of one guy said he claims he caught 90 fish. Another guy that was a customer of ours uh, claims he caught over 30 fish. I mean, just... Complete insanity. All different size fish, slots, uh, over slot fish, um, you know, trolling, throwing plugs, live bunker, however way you wanted to catch them. But then it also has been hit or miss. Like the very next day, it was like almost like no fish being caught. So it's not like, you know, it's every single day it's like this, but, you know, it's a little inconsistent. But again, it's still worth being out there almost every day. This time of the year, you never know when you're going to run into another blitz like that. Um, and even on those slow days, you know, guys are getting them on the troll. My dad had a nice fish, um, on the troll and there was no boats out there and there was really no action. 
Uh, Blackfish is still going good. Tuna is still going good. Um, yeah, uh, sea bass trips are still going good. Everything it's pretty much everything is is going. Um, so it's a good time to get out there and do some fishing. Um, and the weather's been pretty reasonable. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely get out there. Thank you guys. And back to you. Raul Ortiz has a report from around the city. Hi guys, Raul Ortiz here, the Urban Angler, with my report. Fishing continues to be good all around the city, Long Island Sound, and South Shore beaches of Long Island. Here in the city, you got fish from schoolie size all the way up to about 30 plus pounds. Um, on the western part of the Long Island Sound, you got a lot of activity with fish up to around 40 inches or so. The further east you go, the better and bigger the fish. On the South Shore beaches of Long Island, you got all the schoolies and slot size fish you want. As I said before, most of the big fish have moved on. We should get another ra nice run of fish with this moon phase, I'm hoping, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, when that time comes. In the Great South Bay, you still got fish from schoolie size all the way up to 40 inches. I went out over the weekend. Uh, two different areas. I went to the South Shore and I went to the North Shore. Both locations I could not find any fish. I went out yesterday as well, could not find any fish. <clears throat> there was one beach I went to full of dead eels all along the beach, no fish around. Um, as you know uh, there was a big blitz on the Rockaways uh, over the weekend. A lot of fish, all slot size fish you wanted, uh, lasted about half a day and then they were gone. Uh, since that day, it seems like uh, things are starting to trickle down. Um, a lot of boats are in on the action, so that's a good thing. And uh, hopefully with this moon coming up, things will get better. Um, but, you know, time is winding down and fish are moving on. <clears throat> Anyway, besides that, I just want to give a shout out to Joe. Thank you for the photos. And Elena, thank you for the picture. Anyway, guys, uh, tight lines. And back to you, man. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all online now. And free shipping with orders over $100. It is a perfect gift for yourself or that angler in your life. Visit thefisherman.com shop or click on the card in the upper right. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on Google Music. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. Well, there you have it, folks. That is the report for the week. There's still a lot going on. The striped bass fishing is phenomenal. ton of bass on the beach, just off the beach, anywhere from Montauk going all the way out to Breezy and going down to Jersey Shore. There's a ton of stripers around and... This is the time to go for them because the weather is still pretty good. It got a little bit chillier, but this is full weather for you. Ton of blackfish around as well. North Shore is on fire. There's some on the South Shore. And keep in mind, those albies just showed up in Montauk. They are going to stick around because there's a lot of bait out there. So if you do find yourself in Montauk, I definitely suggest you get out on them as well. Otherwise, we will see you next week for the last print issue of the Fisherman Magazine.